just uh, maybe connect just confirm it did, did you get your date sheet yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yeah. so you are all aware that we'll have your exam in the second week i think of august right ma'am 10th of august exactly 10th of august yeah so 10th of august and this time slight change in the pattern the way we give we will have mcqs questions on mcq yes and a very short paper that will be 25 marks now the point is not that 25 marks the point is henceforth uh, like whoever tries to even escape at times i see that you don't want to answer you don't want to be a part of this class discussion so please start being active beta because the rest of the things will assess you in the class as well so only 25 marks you will write as paper but uh, most of the things will be based on your class performance as well so it's totally up to you now that how you decide and what you do like you have to like they one have told you i am just a facilitator and all of you have to use this platform for your growth you have to come out with even ideas also you can give me ideas that uh, this is how we can go about it and all that something innovative that you have in mind a very few presentations i have asked you to make that you have done wonderfully well so anything anything that you want to present something which is new maybe a virtual tour kind of a thing which we haven't done till now so that you have done paper i mean other so something uh, different you want to present like uh, in lagan to be if i am not wrong they had presented the poetry in the form of a video they had made a video and there was a voice over and everything was complete it looked as if somebody is uh, making you familiar with the entire thing including the mood tone and everything was uh, shared now in the similar manner so basically in one word if i say involvement all of you have to be a part of the class discussion every day that is what it is you have just two or three classes in per week so please make use of that all of you be a part of it because you will be assessed every day it's not just assessment at the end and that is like only examination and please remember when it is mcq it will not be very easy to walk through that you might think that okay now i can discuss and i can do this and that and things will be normal no i i i promise you a good paper so that uh, you have a challenge at least so remember that read it in detail and also in the class as well your your involvement should be 100% some of you i have already noticed they are very active in the class and uh, some of them have taken initiative and presented papers like for example rf i i was really happy about that so uh, the similar manner now class attendance is also one thing which you must be uh, you know very regular i i i saw that uh, today it's a recent uh, attendance but generally that is also counted with them which is like uh, you are marked every day every class everything so all these things you have to keep in mind now coming back to the thing that we are going to do today now i'll just share this with you let's have a look is this visible to you ashwarya can you yes yes ma'am all right so uh, why don't you read it out for the class uh, maybe ashwarya only why don't you read it aloud beta nominalization nominalization or nominal nominalization in us english is when we take verbs or adjectives and turn them into nouns or noun phrases so in other words we are transforming actions or events verbs or description of nouns and pronouns adjectives into things concepts or people nouns yeah yeah so uh, you can write nominalization in two ways one is S A. If we write nomination, it would be more of a British English or UK English. And the right is US English. Now, the uh, term explains that when we take verbs or adjectives, turn them into nouns. Turning one, you convert or you transform 
the verbs and adjectives into nouns. That is nominalization. Now, this is simple definition. But when we do the activity, when you are part of the activity, you get to know that, uh, like how you have to do and what exactly it is. Now, before that, a few uh, adjectives and verb forms which have been converted into nouns. I would like to just share that. Just a second. Ma'am, your voice. Am I audible now, Bita? Am I audible? Yes, you are, but your voice is breaking. Your voice is not clear. Just a second, but I think maybe I don't know why. Just a second. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, Okay, now uh, just see how the verbs have been converted into nouns. Like for example, achieve becomes achievement, adapt becomes adaptation, civilize becomes civilization, conclude becomes conclusion, confuse becomes confusion, demonstrate becomes demonstration, develop becomes development, diagnose becomes diagnosis, discover becomes discovery. Duplicate becomes duplication, reproduce becomes reproduction, and perform becomes perform. So this is like converting from verb to noun. In the same manner, we'll go to the conversion in the form of adjective. Now see, from adjective to noun, converted here, like angry becomes anger, available. Yes. Ma'am, can you repeat the definition again? I cannot hear you. Uh, am I not audible at all? Ma'am, now, now am I you're not... audible. Just a second. See, is it visible? Nominalization. Ma'am, it's visible. Okay. Now, uh, when we say nominalization, we mean that if, in very simple words, if I explain. Verbs and adjectives. We all know what is a verb. Anybody who can tell me what is a verb, you only tell me. What is verb? Yeah. Action. Action words. I'm describe. Words are describe actions. Yes. So action words are verb and adjectives are description. So when you uh, transform verbs or adjectives into nouns, when you do that, it becomes nominalization. Am I clear? Am I uh, like? Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, like, ma'am. Yeah. When you are transforming actions or events or descriptions of nouns and pronouns into things, concepts, or people, that is nominalization. Fine. Basically, in very simple term, if I put it, when you convert, when you transform, when you kind of change. Verbs or adjectives and turn them into nouns. That is called nominalization. Then these are few examples of verb nominalization. One from here, there is a transformation here. Achieve becomes achievement. Adapt becomes adaptation. Civilize becomes civilization. Conclude becomes conclusion. Confuse becomes confusion. Demonstrate becomes demonstration. Develop becomes development, diagnose becomes diagnosis, discover becomes discovery, duplicate becomes duplication, reproduce becomes reproduction, and perform becomes performance. This is how these are a few examples. You know, I'll I'll share it on the group as well, and uh, you can have a look there as well. But a few of the nominalizations. Just like the way you did homonyms and homophones earlier, you are going to do at least twenty of them on your own. This is your assignment. Twenty of, like say, ten of verbs and ten of adjectives. Now coming to adjectives. When you do adjective nominalization, see here how it converts. Angry becomes anger. Available becomes availability. Careless becomes carelessness. Content becomes containment. Difficult becomes difficulty. 
disillusionment disillusioned becomes disillusionment excited becomes excitement happy becomes happiness injured becomes injury miserable becomes misery opportunistic becomes opportunity similar becomes similarity now can you just tell me one thing uh, what is the meaning all of you what is the meaning of disillusion can anybody tell me what is the meaning of disillusion what is disillusion yeah i'm breaking and yes you are saying something nobody ma'am break illusion ha huh? ma'am she is saying i'm breaking an illusion yeah but uh, uh, in ma'am the expectation that turns out to be false hmm. yeah this is more closer this is more closer okay so basically uh, somebody who is not happy with the present current scenario okay so that is your uh, you are disappointed you are not happy the thing which was there in your mind it's not uh, the uh, it's not properly formed that is this illusion and this illusionment it becomes noun form it becomes noun now coming to another word opportunistic what is the meaning of opportunistic can anybody tell me one who seeks opportunity uh, one who is uh, uh, like you know uh, a little in the cunningness form if you can say more of uh, uh, he utilizes that uh, particular time for his benefit yeah okay so these are the that is and word or adjective turn into noun and in other words then we are transforming actions or events or descriptions of nouns and pronouns into things concepts or people that is noun so this is nominalization few examples we have uh, done where one is from verb to noun the other is conversion from adjective to noun now this is something which i have told you now let's do an activity which will help us in understanding this uh, uh, concept better now is this visible to all of you yes yes okay yes ma'am i don't uh, not everybody should answer you all know your own number i guess well, first is akanksha yes. then yeah one by one you know so the first question goes to akanksha only and then one by one you can follow right and please remember these are going to be uh, assessed also every day like i said now no more of the typical assessment that you know you have to write question answer and it will be given no every day class a little bit of some of the presentations that you are going to do all that will count now the first one nominalization that is a few practice questions that are there rewrite the sentences by changing the nouns into verbs now earlier what did you do few examples which i showed you from verbs to noun and adjectives to noun here it is just the other way around it is nouns into verbs now can any uh, first of all akanksha please try this report gives an analysis of the problem of climate change and describes three potential solution so the words that are underlined what is organization uh just uh, uh, make the sentence complete with that word which is used just see do you think there is a word like that this report Hmm. This report gives an analysis of the problem of climate change and describes three potential solutions. Okay. Anybody who would like to differ on that, or anybody who agrees? Ma'am, um, analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the report analyzes analyzes the problem of climate change and describes three potential solutions. Yes. One 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 is this. So, Akanksha, would you like to try again, Beta? 
dusty what else can be used there can be two possibilities the first one can kind of is the report gives or you tell me uh, the report analyzes the problem of climate change and describes three potential solutions now the second question again you can try the president did not provide an explanation for the pardon of his business friend can you can you tell me the second one the president did not explain for the pardon of his business friend okay next one do you agree all of you or anybody has a better word for that everybody be a part beta everybody be a part after we do it i'll give you the right answers as well don't worry yeah tell me the president did not provide an explanation for the pardon of his business friend okay now question number 3 arunita or uh, i think roll number 2 somebody else is there yeah fast beta mr black's class debate of ma'am your voice is breaking i don't know what has happened today network issues am i audible yes ma'am no it's clear ma'am Debate concerned the issue of now answer. I'm thinking again. Now, is it visible to you? Then immediately after that, you can answer, Peter. Mr. Black's class debate concerned the issue of nuclear weapons. and the other and don't think there is there now arav sharma please answer Mr Black's class debate concerned the issue of nuclear weapons Am I not audible now? Audible. Problem and describe the potential solution. Both the answers could be right. It can be an analysis also and analyze analyze as well. Next one. The president did not provide an explanation for the pardon of his business friend. The president did not explain the pardon of his business friend. Next one. Mr. Black. class debate concerned the issue of nuclear weapons mr black's class debated the issue of nuclear weapons we performed a review of the company's annual reports we reviewed the company's annual report the school's drama club gave a performance of romeo and juliet on the 2nd of june the school's drama club performed Romeo and Juliet on second June. June. There is a need for further study of the student financial aid program. This student financial aid program should be studied, or it can be vice versa. You can just do the active and passive voice. That will be both accepted. Now, I need a change in my life. I need to change something in my life. I need to change in my. I need to change something in my life. So these are the possible answers. Some of Excuse them. Excuse me. Yes, brother. Ma'am, in six one. 
Ma'am, ma can it be um, this student's financial aid program should be further studied? Yeah, because if further word is used, so you can very well use it. You can either okay. in, uh, omit or speak and use it as well. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, can it be like seven sentence? There is a need to study. Uh, better to be the action has to be there. So that way you have to improve. Now coming to practice question two, rewrite the sentences by changing the verbs into noun. We did nouns into verb. Now we'll do verbs into noun. Now here, question number one: Political candidates need to perform well during a TV debate. Now, apart from Kanna Kanal, you have already done your need. Full next one. Yeah, please answer. Next poll number. Yeah. In fact, Daman, then Rishita, Rishab. Yeah, very good, Rishab. Why don't you answer? Can you show the screen again? Yeah, political candidates need to perform well during a TV debate. To perform is the action. Now convert it into noun. Very simple. During a TV debate, political candidate should perform well. Mm. Better just look up. Look to a question number five. How is it used? Just see. I'm just giving you hint. Use them. Political candidates need to perform well during a TV debate. Uh, anybody else would like to take up? Ma'am, can I? Please do. Political candidates need to give a good performance during a TV debate. A good performance uh, will uh, exclude that. What uh, always try to use the words that are already in the sentence. Okay, but yes, mm -hmm. whatever you are saying, uh, not uh, wrong as well. Yeah. Next, uh, any any other answer that uh, anybody wants to give? Ma'am, political candidates. Yeah, somebody political else candidates. Ma'am, I was saying political candidates should uh, should give performance well, any good performance during a TV debate. Okay. Somebody else was saying something else. Just uh, yeah. Political candidates' performance need to be well during a TV debate. Need to be well performed. That's what you said. Okay. Let's see. Okay. We will keep all the three answers in mind. Next one. RCT needs to assess the recycling system. Can anybody tell me? Okay. Ma'am, may I? Yeah. RCT needs assessment of the recycling system. Okay, very good. I hope my English students will use this book. Yeah. Next. Maybe Bhavya Bharadwaj can speak. Nishra has already done. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Why do you sound so low today? <laughs> no, ma'am. I understand that. It's like, you know, when you are face to face and we are in the class, the entire uh, thing is different. But yes, for a few more months, we need to uh, bear with this kind of thing, but we'll try our best to make it more interesting. Don't worry. One of these days when I teach you, uh, maybe childhood, we, I will ensure that you teach me. There's a poetry which is called childhood. So that day we'll have something very different. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, Bhavya. I hope my English mm -hmm. will use this book. Yes, ma'am. English students are hope to use this book. English students are hope to use. Okay. Any any other answer? Anybody? Uh, Ma'am, my English students will happen to use this book. Happen. <laughs> okay. Okay. All kinds of interesting answers. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. But it's not right. Happen. How can you change the hope into happen better? Okay. Never mind. Next one. Uh, the police... Ma'am, can I say? Yes, please, please do. My hopes are 
uh, that English students would use this book? My hopes are okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, the police investigated the robbery. The police investigated the robbery. The investig. Mm -hmm. The investigation of robbery is done by police. Close. Very good. Next, the Japanese invaded Korea in 1592. Next one, the Japanese invaded Korea in. The invasion of. Uh, invasion Korea of was. By the, uh, no, ma'am. What is the name of the place? Korea. 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 The invasion of Korea uh, was done by the Japanese in whatever year it said. Fifteen ninety-two. The screen is not visible to you. No, ma'am. It is. Uh, it is a little blurry to me. Okay, okay. So the question is: the Japanese invaded Korea in fifteen ninety-two. In fact, you know what happens? I, I can uh, take your listening test from this. That <laughs> at least when I am speaking, are you able to understand? So I repeat again: the Japanese invaded Korea in 1592. Tell me now. Think it over, but it's very easy. All the questions. The invasion of Korea by the Japanese happened in 1592. Yes, very closer. Yes, yes. Now, next, this sentence illustrates the problems with nominalization. This is uh, the best. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, one more. Yeah. yeah the please. Japanese invasion of Korea in 1592. Yeah, friend, but it is incomplete. But the sentence looks very incomplete. Use of uh, preposition and all that. The Japanese invasion of Korea happened in 1592. Yes, maybe happened. You are including on your own. Okay, doesn't matter. We we'll check again. Ma'am, but then Japanese also should be included in this. Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying, beta. You cannot omit anything from this and try avoid getting anything from outside also. Utilize the words that have been given inside. Yeah. Okay, we'll see that. Next time. This sentence illustrates the problem with nominalization. Now, tell me. Ma'am, may I? Ma'am, yes. may I? Yes. This the sentence is an illustration of the problems with nominalization. Very good. One shot. Yes. Now, next one. We can't understand what the professor means. Yeah. The last one. Ma'am. Hmm? Ma we can't understand the professor's meaning. We can't understand what the professor's meaning. The, the sentence completely. Okay. Think it over. Think it over. Somebody else. May I? Yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, it should be uh, ma'am. It should be we can't understand what the professor meant. Meant, okay. Now, yeah. Now, one more thing, children. Please remember, you don't think that if you are answering wrong, I'm going to deduct your marks or anything. No. The fact that you are trying and you are a part of the class involved, you're involved in it. That also counts. So don't think that, okay, I have answered wrong, so ma'am will deduct my marks, that's the reason I put. No. You have to enhance your knowledge, and that is why. And moreover, like just the, the fact that you're a part of the discussion is this book. Next, the police investigated the robbery. The police conducted an investigation of the robbery. The Japanese invaded Korea in 1592. The Japanese invasion of Korea took place in 1592. See, we had the longest discussion on this. So this is the answer. The Japanese invasion of Korea took place in 1592. Now, in this sentence illustrates the problem with nominalization. The sentence provides an illustration of the problem with nominalization. We can't understand what the professor means. We can't understand the professor's meaning. Who said that? Aryan, I think. Aryan, if I'm not wrong, you were the one who said this answer. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. So you see, just an apostrophe, not just not just only professor, but with an apostrophe. It's the word of the professor. So we can't understand the professor's meaning, meaning uh, what he was trying to convey. Fine. Right? So this is the answer. Few of the, like I said, you are going to take up at least twenty uh, of them, uh, changing from verb to uh, noun and adjective to noun. So these are the things that I had in mind. Now coming to a uh, small reading. First we'll do expl explanation. Tomorrow I'll do of the types of writing. It's quite big, and uh, in fact. Uh, Maybe Himanshu, then uh, maybe uh, Agnish and Vanchika. Three of you. I I repeat Himanshu, Vanchika and Agnish. I'm just sharing the content with you. Just read one by one there, or maybe one more child would be required. Wait a minute. Uh, then Rishab, Rishab, are you there, Vita? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Bhavya has also raised her hand, but doesn't matter. I'll ask you the meaning as well. Don't worry. Now I'm going to just share this content with you. Just a minute. Okay. Himanshu, would, uh, you would read the first one. That is narrative style of reading. So please start from here. Types of reading, writing. Types of writing. There are different types of writing. When we are reading the prose. See, in fact, one chapter of Hornbill and one chapter of Snapshot we have already done. Now it is written in a particular style, in a particular style which we generally refer to in English literature. This is very important as far as exam point of view is concerned, beta. So everybody should be a part of it. You are going to do the explanation for me. Okay. Now types of writing. There are different types of writing like narrative, descriptive. Expository and persuasive. Now, if you know the meaning of these words, okay, what is just a simple layman kind of uh, knowledge about the meaning of the word narrative? Anything which is uh, uh, said or which is like uh, in in very simple way, I'm saying uh, a story kind of thing. It is presented in front of you. That is narrative. Descriptive is something which you describe or A small thing is given, and you give a complete look. So enhancing it, expository. It it basically explains things about a subject in detailed manner. The last one is persuasive. It's like uh, a form of writing which is a uh, probability, meaning there is a chance. So that these are the four types of writing that we are using in our literature. And especially the ones that we read, like for example, like I said, the portrait of a lady, and of course, the in the second one, that is the summer of the beautiful white horse. At the end of the uh, discussion of types of writing, you are going to tell me what kind of writing is, are these two things. Fine. Now, uh, why don't you read it, Himanshu? Just the narrative, types of writing, and narrative. Jivanshu, are you there? Am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Now yeah. you are audible. Yeah, please, do. please. Do. Paragraphs and essay can be written in different types of styles. A, a writer will choose a type of depending on what he or she wishes to accomplish. What sort of material is to be? What happened? Network issues. Am I audible, or uh, uh, there is something wrong with the mouse side? No, no ma'am, you are audible. Ma'am, you are audible. You are audible. You are audible. Yeah. Okay, so the mouse, I think I we lost uh, connection with him. Okay, maybe okay. next one. Actually, why why don't you read this part? Paragraph and narrative. That is. I'm again from the beginning. Okay. 
Paragraphs and essays can be written in different types of styles. A writer will choose a type depending on what he or she wishes to accomplish, what sort of material is to be discussed, and what kind of effects he or she wants to have on her on the reader. Generally speaking, there are four types of writing. Though normally these types are mixed together. Narrative: the narrative paragraph or essay tells a story, just like a narrator in a play. Though it should be a true story, unlike a short story or a play, narrative writing is best used to illustrate the personal developmental path a person, often yourself, has has taken to reach a particular point in his or her life. As a result, it is normally written in a first person point of view. True narrative writing is unusual because it is demanding. a narrative must have a conflict that is overcome uh, this is the core of a, of any narrative form of writing be it a paragraph an essay or a story in an essay it is it usually means a single incident anecdote where the narrator experiences some brief challenge that is met and hopefully survived this overcoming should in turn lead to some form of understanding simply describing or explaining one's surroundings is not a narrative you need a brief establishment of of setting and explanation of the challenge and the resolution of this challenge in other words you need a plot fine so next one risha why don't you read beta descriptive style Excuse me, ma'am. And can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, yeah, uh, Himanshu. What happened, beta? You lost connection. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, okay. due to network problem, I left the meeting. Uh, don't don't worry. Next one, let uh, Risha read the descriptive part. Expose it to Yuri. Okay. I'll explain oh, okay. tomorrow, so don't worry. You have not missed much. Yeah, descriptive. descriptive writing paints a picture in its pure form nothing much happens description tells us what something looks like feels like tastes like sounds like or smells like without action or events it doesn't explain a relationship or a process beyond oneself it focuses on one's immediate sus- subjective thus thus descriptive writing connects the outer world with our inner feelings it is usually concerned with creating a verbal picture of what we experience and feel at the moment and it will use many rich and vivid adjectives and adverbs so as a writer you should make the reader long to smell the rich essence of the trees the haunting call of the wolves or the rank order of the sea if that's what you are writing about descriptive paragraphs and essays are usually written in the first person point of view and are much more emotional and personal than expository writing it should be said that you will really write a purely descriptive passage normally speaking descriptive writing is mixed in with other styles as a supplement yeah very good next one now read him on expository 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 Writing exposes or explains things about a subject. It also sometimes for information writing because it gives information about a person, place, thing, relationship, or idea. To accomplish that, it is best developed by the use of clear reasons, facts, and st- statistical information, cause and effect, relationships, or examples. Since ex- expository programs are factual, they are written without emotion and usually written in the third person. Nevertheless, you can see you can use I in your expository writing if the focus is on external, neutral description and explanation rather than the personal feelings, persons, personal feelings. Move your descriptive writing in the expository paragraph and essay. And essays are sometimes confused with descriptive writing because both can spend a lot of time describing things. But again, the big difference is that expository description tends to focus on external objects, situation, and processes. In order to explain something in neutral, matter-of-fact manner, descriptive paragraphs, on the other hand, tend to focus on our emotional responses as we perceive 
as you perceive the world at a point on time. Yeah. Now, first we say, Vanchika, just uh, sum up the whole thing. Yes. This, first we say, this type of feat writing is probably the most common form of writing at the university level. First we say, Civil or argumentative writing attempts to uh, conceive, convince the reader that the point of view or course of action recommended by the writer is valid. To accomplish this, the writer must develop a limited topic which is well defined and debatable and has more than one side. It is important that the author understand other sides of the topic so that the strongest information to counter the others can be presented. You may pre present these opposing points of view, but they must be summarized at the beginning and then quickly re refuted. To refute something means to show it is false or not particularly important. If you are not sure how to do this, then simply Stick to your side of an argument, while persuasive writing attempts to prove your point of view. It's usually written in an objective, third-person point of view. Such a stance helps demonstrate your objectivity. It should be noted that argumentative writing is said by some to be more rational and empirical. That is based on facts, whereas persuasive writing will often use emotional appeals to manipulate the reader's sympathy. However, most writing experts view the two terms as synonyms. Synonymous. Uh, few essays are so cold, coldly dispassionate that they will not use strong and loaded language to win an argument. And analytical facts are always a good way to persuade the reader of one side over another. Yeah. So this is like, uh, I'll just share this also with all of you. Uh, you can have, go through it once, one reading if you can give. And tomorrow we can have a discussion on that as well. Uh, like, for example, the first one, narrative style of uh, writing. This type of writing you have already experienced. Can anybody tell me? A narrative type kind of thing, where have we studied? Which chapter is narrative? Ma'am, the portrait of the lady. The portrait of the lady. Very good. Yeah. Wow. So in a similar manner, but I'll just share it in your class group. All of you just go to. In fact, some of the beautiful white horse also have not shared. That also I'll share with you. These two things. And a types of writing, all of you read it for tomorrow. And come up with examples. Read it in advance and give me examples. Even in 10th standard, if you have studied any kind of prose or poetry, which falls into this category, you are going to tell me. Fine? Well, on that note, we'll end. And keep your questions ready if you have anything for tomorrow's class. Okay? Thank you so much, Vita. Ma'am, can you show us uh, an example of each type of writing? Yes, 100%. I'll tell you also. But I'm just telling you that uh, as per your understanding, you just come up with the examples if you have done it. But as far as I'm concerned, I'll give you examples from 11th standard which you're going to do it. Okay? Yeah. Ma'am, can we say that all the stories are descriptive? Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, it's an amalgamation of all stories at times as every kind of thing. Some except for narrative, which has like, uh, we'll come to one by one, where uh, you have direct, uh, uh, like, you know, the person is speaking. So, or narrating something in first person. Apart from that, you have a mixture of all of them, expository, you will have even the, the uh, you know, descriptive as well. So, it, it can be, story can be a part of uh, a mixture of all. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Shall I'll just send it across. Just go through it once, Peter. Just once or, or at least you go through all of them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma